Swifty Game Makers of Greatness. This is Prop G, and we're going to put some finishing touches on the Word Garden app. We're going to add animation and sound, and while doing this, we'll learn to execute code after a period of time. In our case, we'll update our image with a second image after a first animation has taken place. And to do this, we'll use Apple's Grand Central Dispatch and the Dispatch Queue Async After Deadline method. Are you ready to dispatch some awesomeness into your app? Then let's code! Well, my future Legend of the App Store friends, we currently see that our app will update the image view containing the flower when we update the image name variable. This happens if the player incorrectly guesses a letter, but that change is kind of abrupt and not very game-like. Well, we've got some assets to kick up the sweetness of our game's imagery. If we look in the asset catalog, we've been using the flower images, showing a flower with a number of petals, 8 through 0, but we've also got a wilt image that shows a given petal turning brown. So what we'll want to do to animate our image view is when the player guesses an incorrect letter, we'll animate the wilt image, fading it in so that it looks like a leaf is turning brown, we'll play a crinkly sound, and then we'll swap the wilt image out for a flower image with one less petal. And we've also got four sounds to play when the user makes an incorrect guess, a correct guess, when a word is correctly guessed, or when a word is not guessed. First, let's add animation to our app. And we already learned how to do this in the You Are Awesome app, the first app in our course. We can do this by adding an animation modifier after our image view. So below the image view, if I start to type dot animate, we see several options, but select the one that's simply animation and that accepts an animation and a value. Now from our prior lesson, you might recall that this performs a specific type of animation when that value changes. So press return to accept this. And so for the animation we want to use, let's press a dot. We see a bunch of different built-in options and let's select ease in with duration. This is going to start to fade the new image in slowly, speeding up to full speed at the end. And the duration value just lets us pass in a number indicating how many seconds the animation should take. So we'll press return to accept this. And initially we'll pass in a duration of 3.0 seconds. Now that's more than we want, but it'll give us a chance to clearly see the animation taking place. Then let's tab over, and value is simply our variable that's going to trigger the animation when it changes. And we'll add image name here since we want to animate whenever our code changes the image name. And now let's try this out in the live preview by guessing an incorrect letter. I'll enter Q, and we see a three second fade for the new image. And it really makes it seem like the petal is disappearing. That's cool. Now three seconds is a bit long. I'm gonna change this to 0.75 seconds. And also we don't wanna fade the flower in with one less petal. We actually want the wilt image to fade in. So it looks like the leaf is turning brown before it goes away. Well, we'll specifically want this to occur when the player has made an incorrect guess. And we check for that in the update gameplay function, right at the start where we detect to see if word to guess does not contain guess letter. Remember not is the leading exclamation point operator here we should show the wilt image in the first clause here. So I'll write a comment for what we want to do, animate crumbling leaf and play the incorrect sound. And now I'm going to copy the line below where I update the image name with a flower image, paste it above, and I'll just change the string from flower to wilt. The wilt images are the images with a brown leaf, but when I try to run this, all I see is a three quarter second fade of the flower image. No wilt image. What gives? Well, I get a clue if I comment out the flower image update, and I see the wilt image is actually animating, but when that flower line wasn't commented out, it was included in the code, I changed wilt to flower right away. Wilt never had a chance to animate, flower started animating, and because that image wasn't changed right away, it could show its full three quarter second fade in. What I'd like to do is to animate the wilt for three quarters of a second, then after that period of time, I'd like to switch to the flower image. Well, we can do that by leveraging a set of Apple tools called Grand Central Dispatch, and specifically the Dispatch Queue Async After Deadline method. To the slides! So there's a lot to Apple's Grand Central Dispatch. It was originally developed to allow code to execute concurrently on multi-core processors, but what we want to do here is simple. We've got a chunk of code that we don't want to execute until after 0.5 seconds are up. That's when the wilt animation will be done. So we simply say dispatch Q, note the capital letters in here, dot main, dot async after, another cap in here, passing in a deadline time for the code block and the curlies below to execute. And we set the time to dot now with parens. Unsurprisingly, this gets the current time, but we add three quarters of a second to this. And in the curlies, we add the code to update the image with the flower image. And by calling this code right after we update the image name with the wilt image, we'll make sure that the image isn't updated with the flower image until 0.5 seconds later, which is the length of time we set for the ease in duration for our image animation. Let's code this up. So after we update image name to the wilt animation, I'll put in a comment that says delay change to flower image until after the wilt animation is done.
Now I'll remove the comment from the updating flower image line below, but just above this line, we're going to add the code that we just showed. That's dispatch main dot async after you want to choose the option with deadline and execute in here and then for the deadline we want to enter dot now with open and close parens plus 0 0.75 so that's going to execute the code in the curlies below three quarters of a second after your code hits this line now tab to the execute parameter and we should be able to press return here to get in the trailing closure format i'm not sure why this isn't working maybe it's because i'm using a beta of xcode but i can just delete everything between 0.75 and the closing parens put curlies after this then i'm going to highlight and cut the image name flower update line below i'll paste this in between the curlies and now let's try this out in the live preview i'm going to make some incorrect guesses and will you look at that never has a leaf turning brown and falling off a flower looked so lovely Nice work. Now all we need to do is to add some sound and you absolutely know how to do that from our first app, You Are Awesome. In fact, the code that we wrote was so modular that we can actually raid our You Are Awesome app, copy out the play sound function and paste it in here. But before we do that, we do two things to set up the code for play sound. First, at the top of our code, underneath the existing import Swift UI statement, we'll import an additional module that will extend the Swift language so that we can play sounds. And we learn how to do this in You Are Awesome. The statement is just import AVF audio. Select that from code completion so you get the caps right. Then we'll create an AV audio player object as a state variable, and I'll do that just under the last state variable I've got in my list of properties above with at state private var audio player lower camel case colon because we're declaring this but we're not initializing it and we're declaring at is the type av audio player again that's upper camel case mind the capitalization and we also declare this as an implicitly unwrapped optional which means we have to put an exclamation point at the end of this now let's head over to the you are awesome app i've already got mine behind this project you can pause here to open yours up and within you are awesome i'm going to use the jump bar to jump down to the play sound function then i'm going to highlight that entire function copy it, return to my Word Garden project, and I'm going to paste this function in just above the closing curly in the struct after my other functions, and now let's use this in our code. Remember, all we need to do in this function is to pass in a string which corresponds to the name of a sound file that's in our assets catalog, and as long as a proper file with that exact same name is in there, this function will play it. So let's call this. Right after we set up our image name to wilt, we'll call play sound and we'll pass in the string incorrect, all in lowercase, because that's the name of the leaf crumbling sound. Now, when a correct guess is made, we don't have any animation for that, but we do have a sound play for correct guesses. So let's just add an else clause under this if statement here, and in between the curlies, we'll call play sound, passing in the string correct, also in lowercase. This will play a sort of magic wand sound when the guess is correct. Then let's add sounds to play if the player guesses a word or misses a word. The code where we want to do this is at the bottom of this same function. It's in the if, else, if, else clause, where I put in this comment, when do we play another word? In the first part, the if clause, just before the end, we'll call play sound passing in the string word dash guessed, also lowercase. That's going to play the ta-da sound when the user guesses a word. But down at the end of the else if clause, we'll call play sound passing in word dash not dash guest, also all lowercase, and this is going to play a wilt whistle sound because the player used up all their guesses. And now let's press the play button to build and run this bad boy in the simulator. Hammer time! No errors. Now let's make a correct guess with the S. And oh, such a magical sound. Let's hear that one more time with a W. Love it! Now let's guess a wrong letter. Ooh, and we get the leaf crumpling sound and the animation together, looking splendid. Let's keep going. We'll use up all the guesses in this word. And oh, so sad, the flower wilted. I hear the word not guessed sound play. Now let's guess this word correctly. And hey, we get the word guessed to da sound. Mellifluous. So you can keep playing Swifter, you should be proud of what you've accomplished in just your second app. Now there's a lot more we could do here, we could certainly add some additional refactoring in our code. 
if you learn some other refactoring techniques in future videos, you can also certainly add a much larger array of words to guess. You might modify the app if you decide that you want to show, for example, all the letters guessed as the user guesses them. You should have the skills to be able to figure out how to do that if you want to. And in a future app, we're going to learn how we can query other sites on the internet to get information. And after you learn that skill, you should be able to query, for example, a word of the day site or get a word from a dictionary and use that as your word to guess. But for now, load this up on your device, show it to your family and friends, and bask in their adoration as they marvel at your mad and swifty app development skills. And remember, for a chance to win the super cool My Mac Builds app laptop sticker, you can always tweet at me at Gallagher with the hashtag BuiltWithProfG and a screenshot of your video or your app in action. If you win, I'll send that sticker anywhere in the world. Keep at it, Swifter. There's more app building to come.